Time now for our rants and raves, starting with you, Dan. I have a rant for Apple. Um, Apple uh, uh, complying with a demand from Chinese authorities has removed the New York Times from their app stores in China uh, because the Chinese government doesn't like the coverage that the New York Times has been giving. I can't believe to, they would go uh, along China. with that. Yeah, I mean, you know, to an extent, you do have to comply with the laws of the country you're doing business with. I get that. Apple's in a difficult position, but to just lay down and let the Chinese government walk all over them over this was was not a good look at a time when people are becoming increasingly mm. suspicious of Apple. Anyway, or the New York Times. Yeah. You got to yeah. work with the uh, country where you make all your phones, yeah, exactly. right? Well, that too. Yeah. Yeah. Joanna. So I've got a rave for the anchors of Fox Sports Now, which is a show on FS1. That if you've watched any cable sports show and a lot of cable news shows, you realize that a lot of time is now spent watching people yelling at each other. So, like the pardon the interruption, they set a countdown clock, they yell at each other. So the anchors the other night. Set down. They they created a little faux segment called Master Debaters. They set a countdown clock. We've got a little a little tape of it. We can watch this is what a they did. Program, <laughs> Look, the Redskins need to pay Kirk Cousins. He may not be an elite quarterback, but he's a top tier quarterback in the NFL. I agree with you. You get a decent quarterback in the NFL, you stick with that guy no matter what. I agree. <laughs> He just sat there silently for the remainder of the countdown clock. It was beautiful Actually, that's silence. Funny. It was calm. Everyone's blood pressure was down. I wish all sports TV were like that's this a funny. little bit more. That is funny. That, that is, is cute. really funny. I like that. It was good. A little shtick. Very clever. What the heck were you doing watching that? Well, you know, I learned. I'm around the edges. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, Kelly. Uh, I have a ray for Vermont Digger. It is a, uh, an online exclusive publication in Vermont. And the reason that it caught my attention again is they were announcing once more that they have six count them six reporters covering the state house hmm. this and because they understand that this is what their uh, viewer what their viewers and their readers want they have 145,000 readers a month they just took a survey and 90 percent of the readers said they can't get this information anyplace else hmm. so you can call it boring if you want to but that's what's running our lives and as we know around the country lots of people have cut back on state house coverage their motto led by journalists powered by the public. Rave to Vermont Digger. They're great. I've been there. I've <laughs> interviewed them. Uh, they've also expanded out into some local coverage in areas that are really underserved by newspapers. So good for them. Yeah. All right. Adam. I want to rave about the BBC for having the guts to air a sketch comedy show called Revolting, which included the segment that we see teased there, Real Housewives of ISIS. This has been the subject of great controversy with some people saying that this is uh, a totally inappropriate subject for humor, given what an objectively horrible entity ISIS is. I think that we're living in a time when it's nice to see news organizations uh, being brave enough to satire in a very pointed way makes you laugh, makes you wince. I'll defer to our viewers on whether it's funny or not, but uh, I admire their gutsiness. Do you have a clip? In, well, no, I, you know, I actually do not. If we do. We do. do we have a clip? Yeah. Oh, good. I'd yeah. love to have Let's a clip. Let's play it. Yeah, if we got it. Coming up this season on The Real Housewives of ISIS. It's only three days till the beheading, and I've got no idea what I'm going to wear. Abdul seduced me online. He had me at free health care. So this is my sixth marriage. I've uh, been widowed five times. Times. Again, this pretty gutsy. pretty edgy stuff, but uh, I say kudos to the BBC. No, because I mean these people could be putting their lives in danger. Uh, too. It's it's yeah. a very risky move, yeah. but I think it's crucial as the, you know people go back and forth about this to recognize that when you do this sort of satire of an entity like ISIS, you are not saying that what they do isn't horrific. What you're doing is taking them down a peg or several pegs yeah. by having the guts uh, to make fun I of agree. them. Agree. All right. Well, finally tonight, I have a rave for the. Boston Herald and the track. The track girls are gone. Uh, as of last Friday, uh, Gail, the, the last uh, person on the team, it used to be Laura Reposer, as you recall, and uh, they broke a ton of stories. Can anybody forget the story they broke with John Kerry parking his yacht in Rhode Island to you know, evade the taxes here? That was a great story. And it dogged him, really, for a long time. And um, they broke a lot of news, the, the naked city and, of course, they got nervous in the end about too many lawsuits and that kind of thing. But Gail, as Gail says, thanks everybody. It was a great ride, and I have to say it was a great ride for all of us too. And mm -hmm. congratulations you ever pop to up them. In there? Oh, many times. I was in that naked city once too. I'm not going to tell you which one it was. <laughs>